Good morning guys, welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. I know it's been a couple of weeks since we did a video, but guys, it has been extremely busy here on the farm. Market season is in full swing, and we're steadily trying to harvest and put new plants in the ground. But in today's video, we're gonna talk about this first planting of determinate tomatoes here in the high tunnel, the ones that we did back in March. I think it was March the 1st we planted these guys. But today we're gonna to be doing the final harvest on them and getting ready to pull these out. So stick around. Welcome back guys. It is a hot, humid North Carolina day and it's uh, pushing 90 degrees in here already and I think it's 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, very sticky. But yeah, this row of determinate tomatoes here, you know, these were the BHN 589s, the ones we planted back in March, March 1st actually. And these tomatoes were actually started uh, December 31st or New Year's Day one of the two they were started at the first of this year let me get away from this fan but yeah they were started at the first of the year so these plants are over six months old right now and we have been tremendously tremendously you know uh, satisfied with this variety it put on loads and loads and loads and loads of tomato and if I sit down and done the math I could probably figure up exactly how much we did per plant basically so this row here we have harvest been harvesting on for about a month now um when it first put on they were putting on small tomatoes and it loaded down with blooms i mean it was full of blooms from top to bottom and i was a little worried that my trellising wouldn't be able to hold it and oh excuse me a minute it didn't it, it really didn't the bigger tomatoes were on the top and you can see what happened it kind of just folded itself over and that's okay i mean it was kind of like once it started you couldn't stop it and i just let them go because i can pick them from the outside over this way and still get what i wanted off of them even with that um if i had a built and i will next year but if i had a built a taller trellis i'm talking six feet then we probably would have been okay but you can still this was the average size let me see if i can get this guy out of here this was the average size tomato that was on there. And look, that thing's big in my hand. And you can look in here. I mean, there's, there's, it's oodles and oodles of them. Look over here. You see these guys here? And they were all towards the top of the plant. So all that weight, well, you can see what happened. So I say we're doing the final harvest on them, which means I'm going to go through here and pick out everything that is blushing i'm going to take out all the breakers and I'll, I'll explain this lingo here in just a minute but i'm gonna take out everything that's blushing i'm gonna get all the breakers out of here we're going to harvest everything that looks like it is going to turn in the next few days and we're going to store it up at the house because we're we're actually doing four markets now um yeah four three consistently and basically fixing to start another one during the middle of the week um in ashboro so we are just look look here we are gonna need all the tomatoes we can get. And I keep walking down at the end of that tunnel and y'all can't probably hear me because of that fan. But anyway, I have been um, kind of sorting these things with size and I'm gonna show you kind of what I'm doing. These are what I'm calling my uh, number ones. These are the A's in my opinion. These are the bigger tomatoes. And these guys over here, what I'm calling the number twos or B grade and there's really nothing wrong with them they're just a lot smaller so then you can see beautiful tomatoes they just are a little bit smaller than these guys over here and what i'll do i mean look at this dude i mean that thing's big as my hand and not a crack in it that is you know really really great because normally they'll split they'll bust when they get that big and we don't have any pest damage so to speak i mean you see a little little aphid sign there but i mean for the 
for the most part, I'm really, really, really satisfied with this tomato variety and it will be a do-over next year. So what we're doing is going through and you can see when you pull the leaves back, they're just full of tomatoes in here. And we're gonna pull out everything, see down in there? I mean, it's just full of tomatoes. And guys, like I said, we've been picking on these things for, look at this dude here. Let me get him. We have been picking on these, these plants for a month now. And if I had to kind of figure it up in my head, just knowing what we've taken to market, I am thinking that we're close to 500 pounds, maybe more off of this 150 foot row. I mean, that's just insane. And you can see, this is just what I've picked in the last 20 minutes. And we've been doing this for a month. So yeah, I mean, it's it's been really, really great just on this one row. I couldn't imagine if I'd have had all five rows with this variety in here. It would have been crazy. But anyway, get back to what we were talking about. This row here is coming out. Maybe not exactly today, but it will come out this week. And you can see it is still full of really good sized tomatoes, green tomatoes. And I'm gonna blow that up. Yeah, perfect, perfect for making fried green tomatoes. And we take a lot of these to market too, just you know, for people that want it for that. And a lot of people cook with green tomatoes. But I'm gonna put this guy in here. Um, these like this here. Don't worry, guys. They won't go to waste. They won't go to waste. These little guys here. And you gotta ask yourself, you know. Will they turn? Yep, they will. Will they get any bigger? Probably not. They're probably not going to get that much bigger. It's like the plant is actually running out of gas and it can't put the energy into making fruit and sustaining itself no matter how much fertilizer you put to it. So it eventually will succumb to age and basically die off. And the tomatoes that you see on it will go to waste, but not here. So we do use green tomatoes. We sell green tomatoes, but we also use them in some of the pickled products that we make. We make pickled green tomatoes. We make chow chow. We make things of that nature. So we will utilize these green tomatoes. We will pull them off the vine, clean them up, and basically put, run them through a processor, a food processor, and we will bag them, put them in the freezer. That way we can use them throughout the year when we make chow chow and things of that nature. All right, so what do we do when we get these guys out of here well that's just like this row here you see me plant this row of tomatoes uh, a couple of videos back and they have already got blooms on you see right here and they need to be trellis i need to be trellising these guys so i'll do that sometime this week but once these guys come out we will be putting in our second round and that round will be uh either market fresh plus or red deuce i've got both Red Deuce is a phenomenal fall tomato for us. We planted them last year and we filled the tunnel with them, actually. And we had tomatoes up until December. No problem. Um, it put all of its fruit on at one time and it stored in here. I guess the cooler temperatures helped, but we were able to store them on the vine for long periods of time until we utilized them and then we picked everything out of here at once. And, you know, we still had tomatoes that we were able to take the market for another two or three weeks after we harvested everything. Yeah, right now that's the plan. We're gonna do finish harvesting all these tomatoes. And then we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do with the green tomatoes. I've gotta to get the storage that we use. During the heat of the summer, um, we don't have a problem with tomatoes turning. And we keep them in a back room in our house. We keep an air conditioner in there and it's set pretty low. I think it's set on 65 degrees. And we store tomatoes in there for, I mean, any length of time and uh, we're able to take them to market fresh like that without having to put them in cold storage. Technically that is cold storage, but it's not frozen, let's put it that way. But anyway, um, yeah, that's where we keep our tomatoes. Actually, we're gonna fire that. We haven't had to use it so far this year, but we're gonna have to now because once I pull all these tomatoes off, we're gonna have to keep them. And what I do is keep them in bread trays or bread racks, and you've seen them like we use for our potatoes. Then I set these tomatoes up on them and then I just stack them up you know, in order of ripeness and in order that we're gonna use them. And maybe in another video, we'll I'll show you that setup um, once I get everything running and online. But yeah, let me walk through here and I'm gonna kinda give you an idea of what we're picking and why we're picking it. And is some of the information that I'm gonna tell you is probably, it probably goes against the grain on what you think about tomatoes or what you've always heard about tomatoes. But, um, you know, you guys don't like me up in the comments, but it's a fact and you can look anywhere and find out this information is actually true. All right, so we're gonna start, I'm gonna say with green. 
This is a green tomato. And it's got a little bit of blush on it. But most of your tomatoes that you see will start turning red from the bottom. Just like this. And you can see it's blushing. This is this tomato is blushing. And um, depending on what part of the country you're from, you may hear people say breakers. This is a breaker. This is a tomato that has begun to change. And it will not stop. It will keep turning until it is completely ripe. This keep this in mind now this is what we call a breaker when you hear people talk about tomatoes and they say they're picking breakers that means they're picking tomatoes that have already started to turn and um depending on you know how you want to look at it that is considered a vine ripe tomato it actually started turning on the vine and it is ready to be harvested now if you look in here you see this you say well that's a ripe tomato and you would be true you would be correct let me see if i can get this one out of here that is a vine ripe tomato. But this is also a vine ripe tomato. This is what you would call a breaker. This is what I would call a breaker. Let's put it that way. And um, we harvest these. These guys are harvested at this stage just to keep them from cracking, just to keep you know bugs from getting in them, to keep anything from happening to them so we don't lose the quality. So when we go to market, you know, we get asked, and matter of fact, yesterday, we was at market yesterday, and, you know, a lot of people that buy tomatoes, they want a vine ripe field tomato. Um, we get asked all the time, are these field tomatoes? Are these field tomatoes? Yes. We technically call them field tomatoes because they are grown in the dirt. They're not hydroponic. They are not grown in anything other than the ground. And only thing this tunnel provides is a controlled environment to grow in. That's it. We water just like we would outside. Um, everything is the same. Uh, so field tomatoes, this is what we grow. You call them tunnel tomatoes if you want. Um, they don't taste like tunnel tomatoes, I can promise you that. And the reason why is because we let our tomatoes blush or we pick them as breakers and we let them finish ripening in the house in a controlled environment. Now, this tomato and this tomato will taste exactly the same. I promise you it will. Simply because the ripening process has already started. And once that fruit starts to ripen, the plant basically cuts off all the nutrients to that tomato that it's going to give it. It, it really does. And I'm going to show you how I know that is true. Because let me find one that's pretty close to breaker stage. And I'm going to show you how easy. There's one right here. So this guy here, you can see it is breaking that is what we call a breaker it's green and it's starting to blush now you see this cap any other time you wouldn't be able to do and i'm not putting any pressure on it but you can see just how much this thing has started to wield it up no i'm reaching here and i'm just going to snap they will pop right off when they get to this stage you see how it's kind of withered up on the ends how it's kind of drying and you just push it and it pops right off that plant has actually started to I'm losing tomatoes y'all that plant has started to reject this fruit simply because it's done give it everything it needs to basically ripen so the plant says you got to go so it starts cutting it off and that's when you know that they're ready to pick so you know like i said i know i'm gonna get comments to say that's wrong this that and the other but you know so be it that's what i know about tomatoes and i sell a lot of them so um you know through years of research through years of growing tomatoes um look this right here you see how it's starting to dry up this plant is saying you know you got to go you see how this popped off you got to go and beautiful tomatoes that's a perfect sandwich size look see these little tomatoes like this right here we have people come to market just for those tomatoes those little ones they say there's more flavor in those smaller tomatoes than they are the bigger ones so you know, that's why they buy them but we take them just because we know that people's going to come and get them and they won't get wasted 
can tell you guys, if y'all can see down there, these things are actually full of tomatoes. Right around one, that's a green one, but it's gonna come out anyway, so. That's a monster there. all right guys so that's about where we're gonna call a wrap for this video but don't miss the next one and i promise you it won't be that long where we'll either be taking these tomatoes out taking the green tomatoes off getting these plants out of here getting this bed ready to flip or we already be putting something in the ground getting ready to trellis or something there's always something going on around here and as busy as it is right now they ain't telling what it's going to be but guys, I appreciate you stopping by. And if you missed the video when we originally put this row of tomatoes in here, I'm going to put a link to it up here. And if you found anything useful, anything entertaining, or you just want to know more about our farm, click this subscribe button over here. But as always, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.